and welcome to Church Online Kilmarnock, sharing in worship together for this Sunday, the 17th of January 2021. We have here in Kilmarnock been going through some very turbulent and indeed different weather these past few days, from the cold and snowy and sunny at times, all the way through to rain, and lots of it over the past few days. Whatever the weather, wherever you are, we hope that you can relax in comfort and in the warmth and the light of God's love and God's presence as we share together in our worship at this time. And now here is my friend Jim, who will share some words with us all. Thanks, Taylor. Good morning. Welcome to Comarnock, to our online service on this, the third Sunday of a new year. We hope that you enjoy sharing in our worship today, and in particular, enjoy singing the hymns in the comfort of your own home. We've got some old favourites and some new ones too. Now, we've got some sad news last week of the passing of Mrs Nan Fleming, the wife of the Reverend Hamish Fleming, a former minister of St Marnox. We hold Hamish and his family in our prayers. And now let's share together as part of the one family of faith. and girls. It's time to talk to God now in your prayer. So if you want to close your eyes, clasp your hands and bow your heads. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are living through some strange and frightening times. We can't do all the things that we want to do or visit the people we love the most. But we trust in you and know that this will not last forever. Better days are just around the corner. And even when times are difficult, we know that you are always by our side. When I can't see my friends at school, God of love, be my friend. When I miss my grandparents' hugs, God of love, wrap your arms around me. When I get angry and annoyed, God of love, show me patience and kindness. And when I get scared, God of love, hold my hand. And now, let us join together in the words that Jesus taught us to say when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. I wonder if, like me, you have been going out walking during lockdown, maybe enjoying going to the park and having fun at the park. Or for me, sometimes I go to the beach because that's near where I stay. I think we all really enjoy getting out in the fresh air, exploring and having fun together, especially in these days when we can't really see our friends in the way that we're used to. But I wonder if when you're outside, you use your ears to listen to really listen and hear all the sounds around you? And do you use your eyes to look, but to really look and see the wonder of God's creation all around us? Or I wonder if like me, sometimes you're just a bit too distracted thinking about other things that you forget to actually stop and properly look. Well, we wanted to show you a wee video this is a wee video about Muddy Church and we're going to be using Muddy Church over the next few weeks to help us to enjoy loving and learning outdoors together and we really do hope that you'll join us to do that together. So let's watch it together. I hope you enjoyed that wee video. It looks like fun, doesn't it? So this week we thought we would set ourselves two challenges, two muddy walks to go on. We thought we could all go for a winter wander and for a sound walk. Now remember, this isn't just for boys and girls, this is for all the adults too. We can all join in with our muddy walks. And I've got it here, this is an activity sheet for a sound walk and an activity sheet for a winter wander and these are just good fun they would just help us when we go on our walks and don't worry you can get a hold of these we'll put details on the screen and if you just let us know that you're going on your muddy walk and jill and i'll make sure that you get a copy of the activity sheets now you can either get them on, we can send them through Facebook, we can send them as a photograph to your phone, we can email them so that mum and dad can print out. So if you just get mum and dad to let us know and we can see to that and make sure that you've got your activity sheet to help you when you go on your walk. Okay, and we do love to see photos. So if you go on a muddy walk, can you please take some photos and send them to us and then we can maybe share them on our online worship. 
Okay, so let's go have fun out in God's creation as we wander and wonder together with Muddy Church. We do hope you'll join us and we do hope you'll have fun. Jesus puts the song into our hearts. Jesus puts the song into our hearts. It's a song of joy no one can take away. Jesus puts the song. I'm Samuel, sitting here in the, the sanctuary at Shiloh. I've just finished a letter to my mum, Hannah, and I'd like to share it with you. Dear mum, I know it has been quite a while since I last wrote, but something remarkable has just happened. Don't worry, I am well and happy here. I know I used to whinge about missing you and about my work in Shiloh, cleaning, sweeping, dusting and polishing and all the rest. I know you made a promise because God had answered your prayers and that being a servant at a holy shrine is an immense privilege. But I didn't really understand what it was all about. You spoke about God as if he could be known personally. But all I saw were the ceremonies the rituals and the cleaning up after the sacrifices. And I have to say, Eli's sons are not very good mentors. But all that's changed. I've discovered that God is alive, really alive, and he speaks. In fact, he spoke to me last night in the sanctuary. At first, even Eli didn't realise it was God. He was just grumpy about me disturbing his sleep. But eventually he told me to go back and listen again. So I did. And then I heard the Lord speak. He gave me a message for Eli. I cannot, I dare not repeat it, confidentiality and all that. But now I know why I am here. And I know what God is calling me to do and to be. And so thank you, Mum. Thank you for bringing me here. Love to all at home. Your loving son, Sam. And P.S. A visit would be great. And a new warm cloak. And on oh, some of your home bacon. That would be fantastic. Our Old Testament reading is taken from 1 Samuel, chapter 3, reading from verses 1 to 10. The Lord calls Samuel. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak, that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? But Eli said, 
I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called. Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The, the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realised that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Amen. Gospel, John chapter 1, reading from verse 43. And in this passage, we hear of Jesus' call to Philip and Nathanael. 
The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Come with me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the town where Andrew and Peter lived. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one whom Moses wrote about in the book of the law, and whom the prophets also wrote about. He is Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Nathanael asked. Come and see, answered Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, he said about him, Here is a real Israelite. There is nothing false in him. Nathanael asked him, How do you know me? Jesus answered, I saw you when you were under the fig tree before Philip called you. Teacher, answered Nathanael, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, Do you believe? Just because I told you, I saw you when you were under the fig tree. You will see much greater things than this. And he said to them, I am telling you the truth. You will see heaven open and God's angels going up and coming down on the Son of Man. Amen. And may God bless this reading of his holy word. In a world where people walk in darkness, let us turn our faces to the light, to the light of God revealed in Jesus, to the day star scattering a night, for the light is stronger than the darkness, and the day will overcome the night. Though the shadows linger all around us, let us turn our faces to the light. Let us light our candle in of death a sign of life as a sign of hope where all seemed hopeless as a sign of peace in place of strife for the light is stronger than the darkness and the day will overcome the night shadows linger all around us. Let us turn our faces to the light. As we share before God, so too let us join our hearts together and offer him our prayers of gratitude. We share together in prayer. Heavenly Father, loving God, hear our prayer as we share together in fellowship, offering you true worship. God our Father, we thank you for all we have. We thank you for the gift of your Son who came among us sharing our life gathering our hearts together for you. We thank you at this precious time for all who work tirelessly during this current crisis. We pray for the health workers and the medical staff, those who keep our essential services moving, who keep our streets safe, our daily lives revolving. 
those benefits that so often we take for granted. We offer you our daily work and our leisure time. We offer you our life together as a church throughout the world that we may share in belief and worship, serving and witnessing as we should. Lord, may we always be trustworthy, dependable, unselfish and kind. May we endeavour to share following the example of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And in a moment of quiet, we remember before you the situations and the people that we know. Whether it be a friend or a family member in need, in despair or in sadness. We pray for each one in the knowledge that they be known to you already. Blessed God. We pray for all at this time. Merciful Father, we pray for all who need your comforting arm, your gentle touch in their hearts. Lord, guide us on your way in life, that we may walk and share more fully together in your name. Amen. introduce you to my great grandfather, Captain Arthur McNaughton. Here's a picture of him in his Paisley Fire Brigade uniform and it's dated 1914. It's quite a photo. He's got an axe in his belt, his police medal on his chest and he's wearing his polished boots and impressive helmet. I never knew him, but we all knew of him. As boys, one of the first things we learned was that if you were ever caught in a fire, then you were to get down on the floor where there was more chance of getting air. We were taught that if you were ever in a burning building where the roof was coming in, then we were to get to a doorway and shelter there under the lintel. I've no idea whether that's good advice or not, 
but it was drummed into us as boys. And then the games we played, giving each other a fireman's lift up and down the stairs with your brother over your shoulder, but still with one arm free to hold the ladder, or in our case, the banister. Here's how it's done. Arm through the legs and grab the wrist, leaving your other arm free. Those lessons, those lessons were passed down through the generations. And apparently Arthur McNaughton was a bit of a character, an engineer by background, who was appointed as the very first firemaster of Paisley Fire Brigade. A bit of an inventor who came up with ideas for connecting hoses and even a contraption for spreading ash on the roads to give his horses some grip in the ice and the snow. Now that idea didn't work because it frightened the horses. Here's another picture of him, but this time with his family. Three generations of firemen. There's Arthur in the middle, his son James on the left of the picture, and his grandson on the right. But here's the thing. Captain Arthur McNaughton had a son called Arthur. That was my grandpa. He had a grandson called Arthur. And he had a great-grandson called Arthur, who was my brother. Captain Arthur also had a son called James. That's him in the photo. He had a grandson called James. And he had a great-grandson called James. And that's me. They didn't go in for variety, these McNaughtons. But then that was the way of the world. Children were frequently called after grandparents or relatives. Our names are important, not just because they allow us to trace our family story, but because they identify who we are as unique and precious individuals. We heard earlier in John's Gospel about two friends whom Jesus singled out and called by name. There was Philip, and Jesus' challenge to him was direct and upfront. Come and follow me, he said. And then there was his pal Nathaniel. But in his case, Jesus' challenge came through Philip, who went to him and said, We've found the one. Come and see. Philip's reaction was instant. When he heard Jesus call, he immediately knew this was the right thing to do. But not Nathaniel. No, he was cautious. He was hesitant. In fact, he was convinced that nothing good would ever come out of Nazareth. So what made the difference? What made him change his mind? Why did he turn round and say to Jesus, you are the Son of God? Well, it was simply because Jesus knew him as a person, as an individual, as a unique and precious child of God. Two individuals with two different routes to Jesus. One instant and immediate. The other sceptical and full of doubts and questions. But what's important is that both got there in the end. We are not just an anonymous statistic journeying through life. We are each one unique and precious to God, known to him by name and held in his love. Jesus 
knows us by name. And his invitation to come and follow is focused not at somebody else, but directly at you. Amen. Take them all with me 
Till I see your smile, until we 